right, guys, we are back and we are talking about the reproductive system in the male. And so we're going to zoom in here and point out some external structures. And I've actually already done some of the dissections, so things look a little bit different here than what they would have looked like in the beginning. So remember we had that little bulge that was there at the rear where we said that's where the testes was located, so in that scrotal sac. Um, so I've cut that area open. And this is actually one of the um, scrotal sacs that's in there. So you can see the outside skin that's kind of covering um, the testes and the spermatic core and the epididymis in there. Um, and you can see that it kind of goes all the way in here into this abdominal cavity, which we'll talk about here in a moment. But you can also see that this little flap of skin where the umbilical cord was, that I've actually cut into that skin and exposed this little tube here. So this tube is actually the pig's penis. And so there's that little opening there, that urogenital opening that we talked about. That is where the structure will be able to exit in the process of being able to mount the female and start population. So when that little part comes out of there, that's when all the action happens, right? So um, now let's look down here at the bottom and kind of uh, see if we can dissect this out a little bit better. So this skin or membrane that's covering all this is our scrotal sac. And so we want to be able to cut into that and we're going to kind of expose these structures and be able to see them a little bit better. So cut through this membrane. And as we do, we can expose the testes. And we're gonna see that there's this little part that's kind of going around the outer border of that. So that little oval circle there in the middle, that's the testes, and then surrounding it is the epididymis. So the testes is where the sperm cells are produced, and the epididymis is where those sperm cells are going to mature and develop. And then they're going to travel through the vas deferens, which is actually traveling in this cord. Now this cord is actually the spermatic cord, and it is actually going to contain not only the vas deferens, which is the tube where sperm are traveling, but it also contains some blood vessels and other tissues as well. So this chromatic cord is going to continue all the way up here. And then I'm going to flip this over. And you can actually see where now the vas deferens is going to continue internally. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer. And you can see that there's an opening here where that vas deferens is entering now into the abdominal cavity. So here's our vas deferens here that kind of loops around. And so you can see that there's one coming from the other side. So that's coming from the testes that was not exposed on the other half there. Um, and so this little opening is called the inguinal canal. Um, this is the area that hernias can happen in. And so it kind of dilates that opening when that takes place. So that opening is what allows this to come here. So let's talk about why the testes are actually housed outside of the abdominal cavity. Um, in our notes, we talked about how the temperature of the um, internal abdominal cavity is actually slightly higher than what's necessary for sperm production, for healthy sperm production. And so the scrotum actually keeps the testes outside of that abdominal cavity um, so that sperm is able to develop and then it enters into the vas deferens and then travels through those tubes into the um, urethra. Now the urethra, if I kind of move these things out of the way a little bit more, you can see that there's a tube right here that's running into um, the bladder. So remember we talked about where the penis was located. That's going to continue on down here and it loops back up and then continues here and then it becomes the uh, connection into the urinary bladder. And so then that's where the urine is stored. Um, and then the urethra is the passageway that would continue and connect here um, and allow semen along with um, um, the sperm cells that it's carrying to be able to exit out um, during ejaculation um, during mating with the female. So we're going to pause here for a moment and I'm going to switch up and get my female um, pig and then we're going to talk about her anatomy as well. All right, so we are back with our female specimens. And so um, I've already cut um, into the lower abdominal area for her. And you'll notice that there is some bone here. And I don't know if you guys can tell that that's what it is. But I had to cut through the pelvic bone to be able to expose um, her reproductive organs here. So 
So let's start out by looking in the abdominal cavity. Um, and I'll get a little bit closer so you can kind of see these structures better. Hopefully you can get them clear. There we go. Um, so these two little oval-shaped structures that are here, those are the ovaries. So these are where eggs are produced. And then following that, you see these little branches here that kind of form this Y-shaped structure, right? So you can see that there. And then they kind of meet in the middle here in this little central structure here, right where I'm grabbing. So this here, where I'm grabbing, is the uterus. And these branches that are coming from that, these are the horns of the uterus. So these structures are a little bit unique in animals that are able to have um, multiple births, like dogs and cats and pigs, where they have multiple offspring at a time. So they have to have room for all of those um, little babies as they're developing in there. And so these horns of the uterus, believe it or not, can hold multiple piglets in there. Um, if she were to have survived and developed and had offspring. So, um, a lot of times these structures are confused with the fallopian tubes because in humans, that's kind of what comes next, right? The, the uterus and the fallopian tubes and then the ovaries. Well, if you can look really, really closely here, there's actually a series of little coiled tubes here right surrounding the ovaries. So right there, they're little teeny tiny. Those are actually the fallopian tubes here at the very end of the horn of that uterus. You can kind of see them grabbing one right there. And so the fallopian tubes in these guys are pretty short. And this is actually the location where um, the egg and the sperm join together during fertilization. So ovary, fallopian tubes, that little part right there. Here's the horns of the uterus, these two frilly parts on either side. And then you can see the main body of the, the uterus, that little part right there. And you can see where that kind of connects down with this uh, other structure that we're going to talk about here that's kind of going in between where that, um, that pelvic bone was. So this structure here in the back is the vagina. So this is the birth canal. And you notice if I tug on that body of the uterus, you can see that it's pulling that vagina structure. So you can tell that that's all connected. So this is the vagina or birth canal. And it connects with the uterus and these horns of the uterus. Laying on top of the birth canal or vagina is going to be the urethra. So the urethra is where urine is going to enter into the urinary bladder. So you have, or sorry, it's going to exit from the urinary bladder. So urinary bladder is where the urine is stored. The urethra comes down and connects here, and the urethra is where urine is passing through. And then there's a common area here where that kind of joins. And that ends with this urogenital opening talked about earlier. So the urogenital opening that's just behind where that urogenital papilla is. So if I were to insert the probe here, you can kind of see where that probe goes here in that little tube, right? So that's the birth canal. And then laying on top of the birth canal is the urethra. Urine goes into this urinary bladder and goes into the urethra and that's where it exits. But just behind there is the birth canal that connects with the uterus. So here's our uterus here. And the uterus has these uterine horns that connect with fallopian tubes that end up connecting with these ovaries where the eggs are released. Um, so that's the female reproductive system. And we've reviewed the male reproductive system. So if you need a moment to go back and look over both of those systems, make sure you do that. And then go ahead and take the review quiz.